for both Bonnie and everyone to join, but um, thank you for joining us. We'll just wait here for a few minutes while everyone logs on. Uh, pardon my apparel today. I've been working at the winery and I had a hose get away from me uh, and spray me all over my face and hair. So <laughs> that wasn't fun. Um, but uh, yeah, we're still at it in the winery. We're um, working a little bit with the with the 2019 wines, um, just keeping them maintained. Uh, it, I gotta say, it's dealing with the um, the shelter in place shutdown and all the other things we've been dealing with. Uh, it's been amazing to see how quickly that we lose track of the vineyard and the fact that it is coming quite a lot. So um, the grapes are starting to grow. Um, so at this stage, you can see the clusters. I posted a few um, a few photos on our Instagram and Facebook pages. But so at this point, the grapes are growing in size. Um, they are creating more cells in the berries, but the clusters are already formed um, and they'll just continue to grow. So I am going to get logged on somehow. Okay. It was, say showing, hi. it was showing an error. Hmm. Are you okay? Let's see. Oh. Uh, they say it shows an error down. Let's see. I'm here. Okay, let me go re reboot my. Okay. Um, Bonnie was having an error when she was logging in. Um, but just to give you an overview, um, so she's she's just uh, finishing up with some customers because we are technically open now, which is fantastic. We are very excited about that. Um, we do not have to serve food anymore, so we don't have to pretend we're a restaurant, which is great. Um, so now you can come in, and unfortunately you cannot stand at the bar, you have to be seated. So it's, we still feel kind of like a restaurant, because we have our little kiosk out front, uh, wait to be seated, and um, we seat you, and we have our little tasting flights. Um, I'll have Bonnie bring in our little trays that we're using. But the big concern is that the health department doesn't want the uh, bottle to touch a glass that's already been used. So we have to pour all of the taste in individual glasses, which is fine. Uh, our dishwasher is already on the fritz, so we have to get that repaired. These are all just the corona problems. Uh, the sanitizer, between the sanitizer and the winery, I'll just show you my hand, it's getting a little starting to look a little rough. I have washed my hands several times today, but I just thought I would show you guys that one. Uh, that's what happens when you work in the winery. You don't really ever look very feminine. So maybe I'll have to try to get my nails done when those things open up, I have no idea. So um, what we're gonna do today, um, we, and, and I will let you guys know this, and I'll announce it at the end as well. Um, we are going, now that we're open more regularly now, uh, and a lot of places seem to be opening up um, and in other towns as well. So we're gonna start reducing how many times we do our Facebook Live. We do wanna continue them. Uh, it's just that we, we are still busy. A few have noticed that we're still busy in the tasting room uh, at this time. So we're gonna be sending out a email to you guys. It should be going out tomorrow morning. And in that email, you'll have a survey and we're just trying to find a good day and time to do our videos. Um, but we have a lot of fun ideas, um, different guests and things. Uh, we're trying to get with the Honor Flight program. Uh, like you guys know, we do a, we work with Honor Flight Central Coast to create a label uh, and then all of the proceeds of that line go to Honor Flight. So we'll be, we were supposed to be releasing that on Memorial Day weekend, but obviously we couldn't because of the COVID-19. It's bottled and all ready to go, but we normally have kind of a kickoff party with on our flight. This year we were trying to get it done at the Paso Robles Warbirds Museum, um, but uh, everything's on hold and we don't know when we're gonna release it. But I wanna get a couple of the people from on our flight, maybe the designer of the label, to come and talk about the wine, because each time we do these wines, they are labeled after someone, one of the veterans from the Honor Flight program. Uh, the first label we did was called Tribute, and that was Harry Moyer, who is, I believe he's 97 or 98, and still flies, which 
and I didn't believe it, but when I, I met Harry, he came up and helped us label all the bottles, and he is sharp as a tack. Um, that was a few years ago when he was, you know, 95 or 96, so he's, uh, he's still doing well. Um, so he was on the first label tribute. We had a picture of him um, next to his, I think he had a P40 on the, on the picture. Um, this particular year, we're going to be doing one called Lee's Legacy, and Lee is the gentleman who's featured on the label. He was in the Navy, and he used to be on the minesweeper ships um, during World War II, and uh, unfortunately, he passed away a few years ago, but he, uh, the gentleman who was his guardian or you know helper when he went back to Washington, D.C. for his honor flight program, uh, was inspired after hanging out with him to create the honor flight program here on the Central Coast, so we stay involved with that. So we're gonna get him on. Um, we're trying to get some of the restaurants um, involved, maybe even another white maker so we can taste. Um, so we have a lot of good ideas coming up. So today we're gonna be showing you, we're very excited, we're gonna be doing two releases this year, one in July. Uh, so July 1st, all of these wines are gonna be released. You'll be getting an email about that. Uh, and then the other one will be in October. So what's kind of exciting about this release is we have some new wines that we have never made before. And I think uh, I can tell you stories about them until Bonnie gets here, I tend to be long-winded. But um, very exciting stuff. So uh, we have the pink jug, which if you, this is not in the jug bottle. Um, we have, we will be bottling that this week. So that one will be released on uh, July 1st. We do have the low maintenance available right now. We also have, this is gonna be our Malbec. This is actually, um, we have, I don't know if you guys can see that, but this one features, um, one of our club members actually had Malbec um, a Vineyard, and they normally sell the majority of it to a large winery. They've been contracting with them for years and years. But we actually, um, he normally makes a few tons for himself, and he did not do it in 2018, so he offered it to me, and I gladly obliged. Um, so this is a new wine press. Uh, Malbec is one of the five Bordeaux varietals. Uh, very happy with how it turned out. It's a Paso Robles wine, uh, or Templeton Gap area, if you guys are familiar with that, El Pomo region. So this one, uh, so it's a, a Paso ABA. Um, the other one that we're really excited about, we only made about 50 cases of this one. So this is our Cab Franc that we've been tasting and talking about. Um, this is a really interesting wine, highly recommend it. Very funky, uh, but very light and delicate. It's great for all kinds of different meals or gatherings or even as a cocktail wine. So this uh, particular grape came from the same vineyard as our Sangiovese vineyard. I had been going out there and the Sangiovese was just really stubborn uh, with ripening. So ended up talking with the farmer for a while and Told him I always wanted to work with it, and he goes, well, we have some if you want to try. So this is what happens. I think it's like idle hands are the devil's handiwork, I think is, is the quote. Um, and then we also have this Zinfandel. So uh, we'll talk about it a little more when we taste it. I'm going to put this one last because it's a bigger Zin. This Zin, um, if you guys tuned into the Zin tasting, it comes from a much different area than Paso, well, uh, climate-wise. And I didn't, I was really unsure about it in the winery because I'd never worked with it before. Very happy with how it turned out. Um, definitely a little cooler climate than Fidel, so you get a little more pepper. And just like these really robust flavors, but it's very soft on the finish. So very happy with that. Came from Arroyo Grande Valley, which is down by San Luis Obispo. So I'm sure Bonnie might pass on the, no, actually Bonnie likes the pink jug, but sometimes she likes to go straight to the rest. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the pink jug. And uh, as you guys can tell, uh, this, will, this will not be in a sample bottle. It'll actually be in the jug when you taste it. So, and when you receive it. Um, the low maintenance versus this one, a lot of people don't have two rosés, but it's kind of fun. I'm gonna go ahead and pour Bonnie a little splash. Um, a lot of people have fun tasting the two different styles. Um, there's, a, there's a few ways to make rosé. Uh, uh, one of the more common ways is if people want to concentrate the fruit in another uh, program, 
they will just bleed the free grown juice off of the must and then ferment that free grown juice. Uh, that is what we do with the Sandra Daisy, which is why this, uh, this pink jug is a little more robust than our low maintenance. The low maintenance wine we actually picked specifically for Sandra Daisy, so it, or I'm sorry, for Rose. So it's at a lower sugar and uh, it, you know, turned out a little different. So they're, they're night and day different. This one's gonna be more full body. You can even see it's a little darker, but I don't have the, the low maintenance to, to show you the comparison, so. So the low maintenance, um, we just were putting the tasting notes together for it. So it's like strawberry, raspberry, really delicate, a little bit of minerality. This one I get tropical, very in your face. And they're both good, it's just a matter of which direction you want to go. This one I, don't, I think would be more of a summertime outside drinking wine as opposed to your kind of pair with food. Um, so. Yeah, a little banana, a little peach. I should have just dragged someone else in here to come do my uh, our Facebook live. But yeah, so if you guys have any questions, let me know. I did get to log in finally, which is great. Um, but yeah. I mean, not much to it. Oh, maybe a little coconut too, but like it's just, I mean, there's a lot of flavor and then it finishes. There's still some um, acidity to it because it's rosé. Uh, and it's Sandra Daisy, which is typically a real high acid grape. So that's it, kind of robust. Pairing wise, I don't, I gotta think of what I would do pairing wise. Um, maybe actually, like if you were gonna, a lot of people are starting to do the rosés with your Thai food, um, things like that. But, you know, I, I think if I was to do it with Thai food, I would do it something real bold. Um, this wine needs something bold if you're going to pair, pair with something. But then at the same time, I guess you could just have a little hot pot too. So, whatever you want. So, that is our 2019 rose. And I got to say, it sure feels like it, a year has gone by in the last couple of months. I, I normally, the year just kind of keeps going so fast. And, so much stuff has happened here in Paso that I can't I can't keep track of now. We have some wildfires that are popping up everywhere. So we're okay so far so good. So don't worry about us. But definitely come visit whenever you guys can get out of town. Ooh. Oh, I forgot also. Um, I will double check. I can't remember if we're going to be releasing the altitude again or not in July. We may be waiting on that one as well. Just because when we did the tasting with John, uh, we ended up selling quite a bit more than we had anticipated. So we're just kind of trying to preserve that so it will string out a little bit. Oh, the jug lines. Yes, so uh, the question, how long have you been making the jug lines? Um, we have been doing I've, our first vintage, I believe it was a 2017 vintage, but it was um, released in 2009. And so if anyone, you know, I'll, I'll try to tell the story as briefly as I can. I, I don't know. Oh, my, my iPad's trying to process an order for some reason. Thank you for your orders. Um, so in 2007, we started, actually I can show you guys a bottle. I'm gonna grab it. I'm here in our little VIP tasting room. But for those of you who are kind of new to Pina, I'll show you what our original label looked like. So this is just a little example of it. So um, these were our original wine labels. So this is the Syrah here. This is the Cab here. Um, and you can see like, it's, you know, it's, it's a little more personal. That's our vineyard. Um, Dad, I think, worked with the designer on design the Pianetta. You know, that's a lot of, it's a lot of stuff going on, but it's definitely a little more, a little more traditional. But what we ended up doing was, here I can put these over by down so you guys can see them. But what we ended up doing as we started to grow, so 2002 was our first vintage, um, and 
we started making just the, the two bridles by 2003, and then by 2006, we started trying out Sangiovese. We had a couple other blends. We did a rosé. So it just became a little cumbersome because we had four different bottle styles. We were trying to keep up with the bottles. We had different color foils, and being a small person, you're always up against minimum orders. The colors, we started just running out of colors to come up with for the new bridal. So like in 2007, that was the first year we had brought in Zinfandel. So we already had a blue, we had a red, we had a um, yellowish gold, we had a black, <laughs> we like, uh, and then we had the petite straw, was like a grayish color. So we were trying to think of what else to do. But um, so we ran out of colors and we just decided to do something a little more standardized. So we went with the imprint. The imprint, when you order your supplies for this, you have to be very specific about how many because you can't, with these, you can say they'll use a new next year, all that stuff. But um, you can just put a different label on this the next year. That's easy. When you're ordering these guys, it's printed directly on the bottle and you can't just reuse that bottle. So if you have overs or unders, you're kind of uh, up, up a creek, I guess, as they say. But um, the good news is, because Dad is like speaks XLEs, we are very accurate. Like within um, a half a gallon, when we deal with our with our case purchases, um, and we had all the exact numbers. And the first company we worked with in 2007 shorted us bottles. So when we got the delivery, which happened the night before we bottle, we only bottle once a year. They had shorted us. 30 cases is even about 20 cases of cap. I I just remember, and I, if you guys watched the last one with Dad and I, I had to go tell him that that morning, and it was it was a little stressful. But we, that's when we decided to do the jump line. So that was 2007 vintage, but it was in 2009 that we released it. So it's been about 11 years that we've been doing the jug, and it's still probably one of our most popular lines. As far as the pink jug, uh, we started doing that, I would say 2012. Um, now with the rosés, obviously, they don't age as long. So you're just sitting there doing it for six months. So you're releasing that vintage. Uh, so if I was doing a 2012 vintage, it was released in 2013. So that's the history of the pink jugs, and I, I wish I had one. I used to have a six foot cardboard cutout, and I, uh, I don't know what happened to that. I think it just got used up quite a bit along the way. And maybe we'll have to reinvest in that. Um, but yeah, so that's the story on the jug wines. Um, the 2018 jug is still available. We should be doing that um, through the end of the year. Unfortunately, it looks like our jug blending event is going to have to be canceled just because of all the restrictions with the corona. Um, I will keep you guys posted on that, but I don't think we can really postpone it much more than it is because now it'll start interfering with harvest. Um, so yeah, that's the situation on the jug blending. So we'll see how the 2019 jug goes, but we have a little time before we have to worry about that. Hmm. Okay, so I'm excited. So let's try this Malbec. And then we have been trying to figure out, is it Malbec? Malbec or Mal Malbec? I don't know, Bonnie, we were trying to figure out like exactly, we were supposed to be a researching the French phonetic way of saying Malbec. I have always just said Malbec. Um, yeah, I'll, she'll, she's supposed to be researching it. She'll be writing an article in our next newsletter about the Malbec. Um, so yeah, it's a French varietal, typically used as a blender. I don't really in, like take, drink it much, but I will say whenever I go to a restaurant and they have a, like a Chilean, Argentinian Malbec by the glass, they're typically very reasonable and they're always good, very consistent. And I like them. I mean, there's a lot of flavor, but they're not real big overpowering. Um, so they're a little lighter than the body of like a petite straw. So we'll taste it and see where we go. I promise Bonnie's here. She's going to come in in a second. All right. So now that you can see it, I'll, I'll, I mean, I never know how much you guys can see on the color, but it's really, really dark. So that's another thing for blending wine. Whenever you use these things as a blender, 
you're blending for a lot of different reasons. Um, if you're not using much of it, sometimes it's just to color up the wine. You just want to create a little more um, deep color. Some varietals have a lot of flavor, but sometimes they lack in color pigment. So you can use a little bit of Malbec to color it up without really hitting it too hard on the flavor profile. Whereas Petite Syrah, it's, it a little bit goes a long way and it'll overpower a lot of things. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is, what is that? Uh, Pomar region. So El Pomar, if you guys are familiar with Paso, south of Paso is Templeton. If you go due east from Templeton, you're gonna go about five miles and that's where the Pomar region is. It's gorgeous. They have um, beautiful hills, and one of my favorite things about that region is they do grow so many different varietals. During the fall, everything turns um, like orange and red at different colors, and so the hills just kind of actually look like a painting. Um, so every single um, block of vineyard is kind of turning a different color. Like you'll still have one that's green, you'll have one that's red, one that's starting to be yellow. It's, it's just gorgeous. So if you guys are ever in Paso, Definitely go out to the Pomo region, some good stuff out there. So yeah, the Malbec is going to be released on, and I also grabbed our club thing. All of you club members will be getting your email here um, in the next few days for your upcoming shipment. If you are a quarterly member, you will be getting the Cabernet, the Syrah, and the Barbera. If you are a bi-monthly, you'll be getting the Barbera and the Cab. I believe I will double check. I have a lot of notes on here. Oh, you can sit. Oh, oh my God. Is this? Hi. Hey. Is this one mine? That is yours. I took the um, liberty of offering oh, you the pink jug. And so I talked about it. I just poured myself the night. Wow. It's a lot darker. It's than... way different, right? Yeah. So it's, uh, I got a lot of like tropical notes with it. Uh -huh. But, oh my gosh. And I'm not even doing it in the order you said, but that's okay. You don't have to. I put oh, it on the table. Did I not put the zin on it? Oh, oh, that's okay. We have I it. I apologize. And then I was telling them, I can't remember um, if we were going to do the altitude in July or if we're going to wait till then. Just because we're looking to it on the supply. I thought that we were going to, I thought the altitude might, you were thinking of later. Um, I'll double check the notes. We just had a meeting last night, so we we're going through everything. But yes, pink jug for sure, Malbec for sure, Cal. In and pink jug. Wow. Big. It's like a lot of flavor. That's huge. Yeah. I get a lot of like, you know, and just for comparison's sake, I'll be right back because I do want to, I'm going to go get a tree and the rosé. Hi see folks, them. can you see yeah. me in, in the bottom? So Bonnie's been a busy week here. We've, been, we've had some, didn't have anybody here until the end of the day and of course they come in around five o'clock five fifteen so but it's all good so i'm not sure if caitlin answered i can ask her but i'm sure she probably answered how long she's been making the jug. Did you already answer how long you've been making the jug? Yes, yeah, we talked about that one. Um, so I just was gonna do this uh, to show everyone the color difference on the rosés. Uh, I was I meant to tell you, but then I thought, oh, that's probably not really professional me to yell at you uh, from there. <laughs> okay, so on, on, okay, here it is. This is the low maintenance rosé. It's just, very interesting. This is a Syrah, which typically you would think would be a little darker than a Sangiovese, but keep in mind this Syrah was picked at a lighter sugar and it was made for rosé. Trying to get the... And then here's the pink jug. I mean, look at that. That's it's crazy. Yeah. And that's Sangio. Yeah. It's a nutty. So is it because um, the skins were left on, or did you leave? You know, it could be that the skins were left on longer. Um, this one also hung in the vineyard a lot longer. Okay. This one came off in late October, I believe. And then the sugar, it just seems like it's kind of very, it has some big, full sweetness to it. Yes. 
Yes, it, that yes. I'm not. Um, I'm back. Back by popular demand. Back by popular demand. So, um, yeah, so that is the rosé. So, um, and then is this going to be released pretty soon, or are we bought that one's it? July. Every everything that we're tasting today is going to be released July first. Okay. Yeah. Well, that one ain't leaving. Well, July first is oh, what's today? Oh, a couple yeah. of weeks. We have some right. weeks. Yeah. We just haven't bottled it yet because as you uh, dealing with COVID uh, pandemic, obviously we've been quite short staffed, so we have not had the time. We do all of the jugs, believe it or not. We still did it all by hand. So. It just takes a little bit of time to get those all together and, and uh, bottle them. So, wow. Yeah, huge difference. Are you ready for another? I am. Let me go get another glass. Okay. Or here, just dump it. Just what? You can dump it in here. Dump it in yours? Not but I guess the other. I'll use the shot glass. Oh, I'll just grab one of these because okay. I want to try the. Here we go, Malbec, 2018, El Yeah, this is the other issue. Uh, we're, as we have reopened a little more regularly now, um, things are a little sparse in the tasting room. For example, we can't give you crackers. Uh, we don't have dump buckets anymore because it's communal and we can't dump into a dump bucket. So now you can get a little plastic cup and spit in that like the classy person you are um, and then throw it away in the garbage can, which we have to take out later at the end of the day. So hopefully oh. everyone enjoys the wines and doesn't spit them out because I don't want to touch. I know, I know it's probably the proper way to go wine tasting, but just don't have to finish your taste if you don't like it or if you're trying to pace yourself, don't spit it out. Okay. Do it if you have to. But. Take it with you. Take a mobile spit cup, a depository. I don't know. I just the, <laughs> <laughs> the idea of cleaning up. The, I mean, I, oh, I'm not going to get into it. I, I think you guys get the picture. Well, I used I'm to get grossed bad. out when people would spit in the bucket, anyways, <laughs> and and then I would have to clean that out because I don't know why the spit had chunks or something. Oh. It's just weird. The cracker. You know the worst thing though is with the spit buckets is most people know they're spit buckets, but some people think they're tip jars. Have you ever gotten like I've had the fish out of a few bucks out of a oh. Yes. Yeah. Oh hey what's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> the spit bucket. <laughs> okay. So this one is a really big um, wine and it's interesting. I'm not I don't get a lot of fruit fruit. I yeah. get like the like we talked about this. It's like this dusty, dusty dried. The floral, maybe a little floral, a little. Um, I can't think of the word. But I mean, it's not even quite like a cab because the cab has the cherry. Yes, but this, this one doesn't. has. This is like. A, um, are there any Malbec fans out there? Let us know. Yeah, so the other thing we have to evaluate is do we want to do these ones again? So once we release them and we put them on the tasting list, uh, you guys have to keep us posted. And then when you guys come in and taste, you get a glass for your first taste. And then you get our handy dandy tray so you can self-serve. These are not spit cups. This is where we put the wine. Except you and you put it into your glass, like so. Pinky up, for sure. Put it in. There we go. And uh, yeah, we we're doing a lot of dishes, so it's all good. Yeah. So what do you think? I haven't even tried it yet. It's just like a I'm getting that. Uh, it's a lot going on. Maybe we'll have to do when this goes out in the wine club shipment. Maybe we'll do a zoom. Um, that's kind of on the potential as well for these things because a lot of these new wines I think will be very interesting to see what you guys think. Unfortunately, the Cab Franc is not going to be going out in the club shipment because we didn't make enough. We only made 50, 47 cases essentially. So that's just not enough to go around and like leave enough for us to sell here in the tasting room and take home. So I have to tell you, the Malbec, the nose and the taster. 
uh, the nose on it and the tasting is totally different. You get like floral and anise. Yeah. Um, or like a clove. Is clove like an anise? Or you get more liquor? Yeah, like um, anise, like a... Uh, like, but not like a real extreme, it's a hint. Yeah. I just kind of picked those up a little more. Um, did you ever, did you ever, when you were growing up, um, they called it an Italian finocchia, but it was a white, it looked like um, a celery, a white celery, but and you peel it off and you eat it, but it's... That, that's fennel. Yeah. yeah. So that's what essentially um, anise fennel. It's like yeah. very similar. But uh, that we used to call it finocchio. Oh, I can't do it. You can't. Oh, I no. love it. I See, love it's funny. Finocchio. Yeah. I I've had. Ooh, that would be like um, someone does a fennel soup or something that's delicious. Mm -hmm. This one would be interesting to pair with like yeah. something creamy as opposed to go meat meat meat. Yes. Well, I like we've talked about before. Uh, Malbec is more for the leaner meats not a lot of fat because it's not doesn't have a long lingering finish mm -hmm. so um Lamber. yeah venison more like um, duck ducks and greasy though isn't it yeah Oily. yeah i ha i cooked a goose for thanksgiving last year instead no. of a turkey did you stuff it with a duck <laughs> <laughs> the turkey wait wait that's a turkey so you do the turkey with the duck with the chicken this was a goose though oh did it honk? No, but okay. it had a very long neck that I did not feel comfortable about. Did you have to pull that neck in? Yes, I did. <laughs> so often. <laughs> I gotta tell you, the, the fat of the goose. I will say, <coughs> now that I'm, was it was at the Corona? It's the Corona. No. Although I cannot inquire too much, I have given Bonnie the guidelines for health safety. And I do feel that you are making sure you're feeling well. Oh, I always do. I always I make sure I drink a lot of wine, and especially Pianetta wine, because I really feel that a lot of people don't realize this, but the alcohol, I think, kills the corona. I think so. I think it is. That's but why I checked on the barrels today, and they didn't have it. They didn't have no, it. See, I told you. See, so they're, they're the ones. Yeah, and the other thing is you, can't, you have to make sure your lips aren't blue. That what about a blue lipstick? This is a fun fact. Well, if this continues on to Halloween, I think everyone's gonna. We're gonna think everyone has. We're gonna all look like zombies. Just so you guys know, one of the items on our checklist is: Are your lips blue? And if if they are, you should probably stay home from work and possibly go to an urgent care. Yeah, and get tested. Yeah, I would probably do that anyways. But I, you know, I figure if I, my lips did turn blue, I would just quarantine myself for 14 days and let you know. Ah. Yeah. So, just in case. No. I'd probably try to quarantine myself somewhere. Well, I guess if they're blue, I'm staying home, but. Yeah. Um, okay, is the Malbec and Pianetta Vineyard how many acres? Heck, okay, so this is another one. She's asking about hectares, um, which is mostly in Europe. Well, I mean, anywhere other than the US. I don't know the ratio of acres to hectares. I'm sure somebody does. Um, this particular vineyard is actually not ours. This came from one of our club members. Thanks for asking the question, Andy. Um, this came from one of our club members' vineyards, which is over in Templeton, which is just south and east of us. Um, it is in a region called the, uh, the El Pomar region. So uh, really kind of a neat, unique region. <coughs> Oh, scared me. Um, on our vineyard, we have the Cabernet, uh, we do have Petit Surround, and we have Petit Verdot, which we just planted as well. Yeah, so it's really, I mean, on the finish, it's not like super light. I felt like. Hmm. Um, you know what I love about this Malbec, though? I have to tell you. It's a little cinnamon or from when we just From when we tasted it weeks ago to now, I just can't believe how much. It is, to me, I feel it's gotten a little fuller in the bottle. I think so. I think it's really rounding off very nicely. I really like the cinnamon on that. I do too. I mean, and clovey cinnamon. I wonder when I would fix this with now. I can't challenge your dad. You're talking to him yet? I didn't. <laughs> um, <laughs> things have been a little tense at the vineyard. I have interacted. Okay. Conversations have been short. But 
I'm here to tell the story, which is what is important. Yeah. That's important. That's the story and she's sticking to it and that's right. Yeah. Hey, Sherry, thanks for joining. Okay, so, oh, you're not. I don't wanna hurry you. I'm like, oh no, I'm really excited. But that's okay. I can splash a little more Malbec. So um, one of the things that we do as we get ready for the release of this is I, I, um, we have to do all the tasting notes, the text sheets, all that stuff um, before we release. So that's what we're preparing right now so that when we release it, we're good to go. Um, so when you guys taste it, if you disagree with our tasting notes, let us know. Let us know. We want to know. We yeah. want to know your opinion. Do you get a little... Um, you get a little chocolate. You feel I thought chocolate? so. I think it's more like that clove okay. and a hint of cinnamon. But I get, I don't get it till the finish. Yeah. Um, but it's more of a lighter chocolate, not a dark chocolate. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. And I, I don't even want to say the word mole. It's yeah. Like. No, um, oh, I'm not. To tell you the truth, I'm not a big. I don't know. I don't know why, but mole. I'm not a liking that flavor. I'm not a mole person. I have to, it has to be the right mole. Yeah, because it, it's like the Cincinnati chili, you know, because they put like the cinnamon and the chocolate in it. It's just not for me. Yeah, and it's not for me either. I'm not in one of those. Hmm. I like more, but I do like my chocolate flavor in my um, stouts. Yeah. Mm. Have you had any good quarantine beers? Oh yes, just so you guys know, the breweries have reopened as well, and we don't have to serve food. I believe, right? They don't have to serve food out of <coughs> Bless you. for killing them. I mean, if you go to Barrel House, I don't think so. Uh, when we had to serve food, the Barrel House Brewery, which is one of our local breweries, was serving a cup of noodles with every beer to qualify for the restaurant. And it was only 25 cents, and then you can donate it to the to the food bank. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they're doing that anymore, though. But it's kind of I loved the concept of donating. I did too. If I if we could have gotten away with that, I would have loved to have done that because that would have been a way that we would have been saving some. Because the food banks have been uh, really uh, hurting because of the corona. They've been hit hard. You know what has actually been touching to me is how many people, um, we have a culinary school here in Paso, and they have actually been, they have a drive-through free meal every day. That's awesome. And food things. So like you go through and you say, I'm a family of two, or it's just, you know, two adults. They'll give you what is allocated for the adults. Oh, I have, you know, two adults and three kids. They'll give you three kid type meals and Two adults. Like it's just really I it's nice to see that happening. And then the bakery um near my house in, in the Tascadero, they're doing they don't allow you to buy their bread right now, it's all donation based. So you donate. You donate money and then the and then they bread. Re, and they um put that towards uh, different causes locally. But can you get bread? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say they don't allow it, but I mean but what about the bread? Because yeah. that's really the yeah. The, the, the bread and cheese, I would oh, be gone. I have gone crazy. They make the best croissants. If you guys are in town, oh. it's called um, Back Porch Bakery. Okay, I'm going. They operate out of the Carlton and oh, phenomenal bread and phenomenal croissants. I'm gonna go there Tuesday. Be oh no, I'm not because I'm working Tuesday. Um, they open in the morning though. Okay, I might have to go Tuesday because I have to put my. Um, my vacuum cleaner that is can't be fixed. See, I was my vacuum cleaner broke too. Oh no! Yeah. What kind of Corona problems? Um, it's pro I don't know. It's ten years old. I can't remember the brand. Mine was twenty. Yeah, but it was a Dawson. It was so good. But I found out that, and I should have taken it in earlier. She said that something. If I would have taken it in, that I could hear the noise when. It, it was being used upstairs. I could hear there was something wrong with it, and I should have taken it then. Oh, yeah. But it is I don't know. Fun. It's so loud. I can't tell the noises. But it's like mine wasn't really an expensive one. But I have to say, of all the things um, I remember from my childhood, my mom had a Kirby vacuum with all of the 
I mean, we're talking from the 70s, real heavy metal thing. And I got very acclimated with this Kirby because I had to use it twice a week every week uh, to complete my chores, which were very precisely laid out. That thing she still has. She still has it. It still runs great. It's an amazing vacuum. You know what, Jeff? Uh, the other one was really good too was Electrolux. You ever heard of that? I've heard of that in other appliances. And actually, Electrolux at, was the vacuum that we would. You would have the attachments that I would drag it, oh. and it was it looked like a long hot dog. Oh my gosh! I know my neighbor had one. And I have to tell you, they were, they're very expensive when I they was... They looked like little robots. On the move. Yeah. On the yeah. Move. And I would be using it, I remember I used it, and my mom said that um, the vacuum cleaner guy's coming and he's going to fix it. And I said, okay. So someone came and knocked at the door, and I go, are you here for the vacuum? And he said, yes. And so I gave it to him, and he walked away with it and never came back. And I guess, hey, John, um, I guess um, what had happened, it was some... Um, company looking for stuff to donate mm -hmm. and so I donated my mom and dad's vacuum and we never got it back. No. That's not good. It happens. People make mistakes. Yes. And so, she, here, so here we are. We are on the Cab Franc. Cab Franc. This is kind of one of, uh, just like the Malbec, kind of a little more exciting. You yes. know? So um, Cab Franc comes from Lockwood Valley Vineyards. So there we are. Lockwood Valley Vineyards is in the very southern part of Monterey County. Um, so that would be more of a cooler climate? July 1st, this will be coming out. Um, no, this it's still very hot there. They just get some bigger temperature swings from what I understand. So it um, it's out by the lake. If anyone's been to the area, um, if you know, there's Lake Nascimento, and then just north of that, you have Lake San Antonio, and then, um, on the way, just, you know, if you go north of that, then you have Fort Hunter Liggett, which is the Army base out there. Um, and then you also have Mission San Antonio, which is awesome. It's in very much original shape because it's on an Army base. Do we get to, if I wanted to go to Mission, would I be able to? Um, you know what? I don't know. That's the one thing I've been trying to figure out. I don't think museums are open yet. But they can have mass, I believe. But maybe it would have to be an outdoor mass. But on it, that mission is just, it's one of my favorites because it's it, it, the grounds, because it's on the army base and the city hasn't built up around it. The grounds are like still very preserved, not like how it was then, but like you can see their irrigation ditches and you can see their pastures and you can see um, how they organized the, the land. Which was interesting. And then you can see some of the sad things, too, like the Indian graveyard being separated from whatever. So what I wanted to ask, has, it, has the Army base, did they build their self around that yes. mission? So that land, I believe, was owned by the Hearst family because the, I mean, I, I've been out there a few times. Um, I've actually done a wine pouring um, for some of the, People who are staying out there, which is a lot of fun, it's beautiful. But the location there was one of William Randolph Hearst's, I believe, hunting lodges. Oh, and um, so they made that kind of the not the ballroom, but kind of like the mess hall, kind of like where everyone would gather and hang um, or have banquets. Banquet hall, I guess, is the best way to put it. And then they have a few rooms that you can stay at. Um, like most bases have like a whole hotel where you can go, like um, if you're in the military, not me, you can go and stay. This one has um, like five rooms because it's so small. But it's from the 20s. I believe it was built in the 20s. Um, the base, I don't know when the base, I know it was there during World War II. I just don't know how far before. So, okay, and I know we're getting off subject. Yes. But I'm so, I, I apologize. But so did, um, when you went up and got this, particular grapes how did you how did you find this this was and um, i was talking about it before you came in it was uh, not not in depth but the, um this came from the vineyard that we get our san Giovese at so it's in lockwood valley okay. or it's um san antonio valley is the name of the aba uh which is a sub aba of monterey county and it was just that when you go during harvest you're walking vineyards all the time um and the san Giovese, 
Uh, I've worked with this fur before, and he goes, this, it should be coming off the first week of September, I guess. I don't know what's going on. And I would go out there, and, and I trusted him, so I didn't have to go out there as much as I do some of these passive vineyards, because it's much closer. It's about a 40 minute drive to get out to this vineyard. Um, but I would go out, you know, every week or, or so and check on things and he would keep me up to date. And so I would go out there all the time and, and, uh, and he's a great guy, nice guy. And, and we got to talking and, you know, I was asking him cause he's kind of taking over the vineyard from his mom. And we were just talking about future plans and everything. And they do a little bit of wine making on the side with a custom crush facility. And so we were just talking wine making and I told him I was always interested in, in trying a Cap Franc. And he goes, I have some Cap Franc. And so that's how it turned out. So yeah. hopefully this will be something that we'll do again because we're very happy with it. Um, the few people who've been able to try it so far um, really like it, so. I dig it. Yeah. And I'm very impressed with, um, you know me and my new friend. I know. <laughs> oh, Sherry um, asked a question. So all of these wines, Sherry, are going to be released on um, July 1st, but you'll get an email in your club email um, that'll tell you like information, price points, all that stuff. So even you could probably pre-order. We just won't deliver them or ship them until the 1st of July. So yes. if that helps, but we'll, the, we'll be sending out some yeah, promotional. But the Cabs Franc will not be, well, it'll be released, but it will not be in your shipment, like Caitlin has said because we didn't make as much. Yes. Um, I want to find out, and I, I think somebody, since we do have the Malbec, mm -hmm. uh, we, do, we, we have Malbec, we have Cab Franc, we have Cabernet, and you're growing Petit Bordeaux, I'm, I'm hoping that there might be a Bordeaux style Perhaps in the future. we shall see. Um, all of the stars need to align because uh, we have not been able to harvest our Petit Bordeaux because yeah. it's so young. So that's like the big the name of the game of this business is uh, patience because you plant a grape, you can't harvest it for three years, you don't really get it to maturity until five to seven years, then you pick it and then you have to let it age in the winery for two to three years and then you have to let it sit in the bottle. But I'm just wondering yeah. even just a little bit, I mean, well, because we've already had the cab you, the Cab Franc is a, is... This isn't well, one of our estates though. I yeah. know, but, but I just was asking, you don't have to go buy Petit Bordeaux if we you We have want. it available if we would like, yeah. Okay, so that that's all I'm saying. Yes. That, and I know you and... Yeah. So I, I this one always blows me away, and I taste it just to double check, but we get pepper and like dried strawberries. Mm -hmm. It's so bizarre, and you think it's gonna be way big, but it's actually really delicate. It's quite nice. What is the alcohol on this? Because usually in a warm climate, it should be a little out. It's a little higher, huh? This one is 14.9. It's that's, actually that's not very good. good. Yeah, it's actually wow. not too high. And but what surprises me about it was with those like different flavors, like that little pepper. And it's not like a black pepper. It's not overwhelming. It's or kind of pepper. It's like a light white pepper. Yeah. If you it's, have, it yeah, just is there. It's apparent. It's nice though. It gets it that little oomph. I don't normally like pepper, but I really like this one. Mm -hmm. It's a really unique one. I'm surprised because you're a Syrah girl, and Syrah usually has the pepper. And then, oh, I get vanilla. Mm -hmm. The finish is beautiful. You have some, some acidity, you have um, some tannin, but it's very, very, very soft. Yeah, it's like low acidity. I, I like it. But I do kind of like the dryness that it does. I mean, a lot of people don't like a dry wine. I like, I like what it makes my how it makes my mouth feel. <laughs> I'll bet you do. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say? So I'm. Uh, it's been a long day. So I'm getting a flavor on the mid palate, and I can't quite identify it. Yeah, the mid. Um. So it's like before the finish, and it's like the mid palate. So I'm just trying to figure that one out. Definitely try the Cap Franc. And like we said, this will not be going out in the club shipment. So we will let you know what, um, when it's released and or if we'll do any promo things for the wine club. I don't know yet. It's right there. I guess it almost is like a coat. Yeah, it's like right on your palate. Like if this is your tongue, like this, 
it hits you right here. Right? Uh, not at the very back. Uh-uh. Not at the very top. No, it's just right like right in the middle. Here. So, that's my tongue, by the way. <laughs> I'm trying to make a nice tongue. Yeah, I like it. I'll, um, I don't know. We'll have to identify. I, it could be cherry. Like a little cola? Mm -hmm. All right. That's very nice. Cola. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, a little cola. It's like, like a not, cherry cola. Yeah. But like not a sweet cola. No, it's nothing. It's nothing sweet here. No. Nothing sweet here except the people. Yeah. But this, I don't know, I just, you don't have just certain wines that just attach to your body and love you forever. That's this one? Yeah. I have that experience with food. <laughs> Cheese. Mm -hmm. Good wine. Is that my zin? This is the zin. Okay. So this was really kind of a pleasant surprise when we tasted this. So this is another wine that will be released on July 1st. Um, this one will go out in our club shipment. And don't worry because I have to tell you, if you have some of the 2017 Zin, I would hold on to that for a little bit and like maybe do it a little vertical, 17, 18 with these ends. Mm -hmm. Totally different. It's a lot of fun. And it's, it, it, you're going to love this 18. Yes. It's just, it blew me away, like you said. I don't think we'll have, I think we're sold out of the 17 uh, right now, but um, it would be really cool if you, like you said, it, to put a little vertical together. Oh, because to taste, to taste the different Zins. It is really fun. It is super fun. And one thing that I love about it is because you've done them both. And mm -hmm. the to me, tasting this one and tasting the 17, it night and day. Yeah. And now oh, they're so different. That's what I love about it. I just love it. I didn't believe it until I tasted it. And yes. it's like Zen. I love Zen. And I like ours because it's a little more delicate. It's not that over the top. Some of the uh, some of the Zins in California have gotten 16, 17% alcohol. It's just way too yeah, much. Not shown your butter. There's no flavor. Yeah. Or the, um, ours has a little more fruit. It's just a little more traditional, easy drinking. Mm -hmm. it's and not, this one is a little bigger, but it's yeah. really delicate. Yeah. And and I I consider it more elegant because very elegant because it has the fruit and the pepper so nicely balanced through the whole glass. Yeah. It's it's amazing. From start to finish, you're gonna be you're gonna be happy. Your endorphins are gonna go wild. I that's nice. Yeah. But right away, I totally smell the. I get that pepper right at the beginning. Hmm. I get that right on the nose. I get some nice aroma. But it's very delicate. It's yeah. not. No, it's not like it's gonna hurt you. It's mm -hmm. not gonna. But, but it it's like a not a, it's not a sweet pepper, but it's um, just a really light. Uh, a dash of pepper. It's like there are some zins that are like real heavy black pepper. Yeah. And this one I wouldn't even call white pepper. I would call it more um, a sprinkle. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Like, I'll have to go check out some peppers. I don't know. If anyone has any suggestions, let us know. Um, For those blackberry so and plum on there. Yeah. Big time. But rich, I mean, it's like all the flavors in this wine are just so delicate, um, just refined. Maybe that's what I want to say. Yes. Refined. Delicate is not a, yeah. Refined is good because they are apparent. You're not going to miss them. They're there. But it's just very well put together. Just like you said. Just like Bonnie said. Take Bonnie's word for it. No, not it. But you know one thing I love about when I just taste it? You taste the different flavors. But... Now, what you've smelled is sitting right on the middle of your palate, so mm -hmm. you're going to taste what you smell, which is actually very nice. And I think it has a little bit of plum, so it's like a pepper with some plum sauce type mm -hmm. of thing. You know what I mean? Yes. It's not sweet, but it has that. And it, to me, what is the biggest difference? Like, so we have ours in Fidel, which I love. The 17 is actually, oh, I think, my favorite vintage so far. But when you taste them side by side, you get like the fruit intensity on the 17 is much bigger. Yes. Zin is typically a big one. Yes. This one is just like a like subdued. 
present but subdued, mm -hmm. and then there's layers to this one. It that's what I love. I the layers, and it really shows off the versatility of a Zen Pandala, yeah. which is great. And that's what I like too. Is it's not hot. Like a lot of people talk about a Zen being hot, it's because it has too much alcohol. It, it's a burn, and no one likes the burn. No one likes the burn, except if you're working out. Mm -hmm. Right, that's an okay burn. Everything else not. But it's not a. If you don't like a a burny Zen, then don't buy the high alcohol Zins. I mean, and, and it's okay. And don't take oh well, that's a typical Paso Zen because that's not true. Mm -hmm. It's how taste, it's taste, made. taste again. Taste. I still have it. I just love it. Caitlin, I, I have to tell you, I love the 17, but what... I really like this. What you've done with this is amazing. I didn't this, just, you know. This was a problem child. It see, was like usually, a little adolescent teenager going through the winery. I was really unsure about it. And you, then it turned out great. You, This is phenomenal. Yeah. I, it, it's, tasting it now, and it tasted, we tasted it a couple of days ago. Yes. And that's one thing I love. Just to let you know, we opened this a couple or was Yester, it yesterday. Yes, that meeting. Yeah, we opened this yesterday. It tasted great, but actually, I opened it earlier and poured it for some customers. Oh, cool! So they really liked it. So, but I told them we didn't have any, and so I sold them. I had one seventeen. I told them I could sell. Oh, cool! So, anyways, to make a long story short, um, this is in. It, you know, a lot of people don't realize how long can I leave it open or what do I oh, do? Oh, yeah, or this gas. is a, So this has been open that. for uh, over 24 hours. Mm -hmm. We did pump it and take, we, all we did is take the air out. We yes. don't put gas in it here. And I have to tell you, this can, this will last for a couple of days in the bottle. Just keep it corked. Don't let it get too hot. If you're not one that can't drink, two or four glasses of wine a day. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, you, if you, yeah. you could drink two today and two tomorrow, and this will taste even better tomorrow. This one, I'm, I'm very impressed with how this has gone. And, and as far as laying down, because we talk about aging wines all the time, um, and I really think, now number one, rosés, this is not something you typically want to lay down. It's kind of a drink it within the first year for sure. Um, but well, it's a white one. Yes. Treat the rosé like a white wine. Yeah. The, the Malbec and the Cab Franc, I think, will lay down. Very I nice think so. Though. I don't know much. I think the Malbec is going to age beautifully. I can just feel like the intensity just kind of soften, and, and it just is going to expand and lengthen that wine. The Cab Franc, I don't know much about it, but I think it has potential, but it seems lighter, and I'll be curious to see how that one ages. Exactly. Exactly. But I, Zinfandel, a lot of people say, sorry, they keep in no, no, a lot of people don't right. want to age in that. Well, they say, rule of thumb, and it all depends on what thumb. If Mine is pretty dirty. No, it's not dirty. You just have stains of wine on it. But mind. they say you want to drink a Zin within a five to seven year period because mm -hmm. it doesn't stand up or lay down one. But I think it depends on the winemaker because... I have to say, um, like Zin Alley, and mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to keep on bringing Frank up, but he, he makes a specific style. Though, all of yeah. him, and yeah. all he does is do Zin, Dry Farm, and his Zins last a long time for some darn reason. He he has it down, but that's all he does, and he, you know, and I don't know if Dry Farming lets you gives your wine something that it can lay down longer? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So it all depends on who makes it. But I think this one, it has some tannins there mm -hmm. to where they, they'll even soften. So I think this is going to taste really good. It tastes phenomenal now. It's going to take, it just is going to get better. Yeah. I don't know which one. I'm going to go back to the Malbec and taste. I don't know which one is my favorite. With all of these, I mean, they're all great. I'm very, we're, I'm excited to get these out. Plus, they're new. We're, I mean, even though we've done a Zen before, just like you said, this is a much different style Zen than we've done. Yes. And so, definitely give us your feedback on it because we want to know what you think. I would love to know what you guys think about it, so that we know which direction to go for the future. 
Do we have any older lives left? Well, that's the other thing. So in the past, we didn't know or think because Zen was new. We started our Zen. We did, and it was never a consistent product, which is the other reason. Exactly, you made it. Yes. it was we made it miss. one year and then not the other, and this and that. And it was just like if we could make it, we could fit it in. That'd be great. But it for wasn't the, a priority for the longest time. We just didn't see the need because. So many people in pastoral rules make it in. Everybody. Yeah. But not everybody because there are snibblers that, because the reason why, it used to be called Zinfest. Yes. And then people complained because they didn't have Zinfandel, so they had to do vintage Paso. Yes. So, and yes. yes. And, and so it, it'll, be, it'll be interesting. So we did start saving a few of our Zins. I will double check on the vintages. I think there's some 16. So that would be. We started making if it we consistently had, in 2016. Okay, so if we have 16, that to me that would be a fun 16, 17, 18 vertical to oh, put yeah. together and do it as a special package. That'd be fun. Is if we have it. Yeah. Well, I'd buy it in a red hot minute because you know me and my verticals. I like. I know. I you know, them. being able to compare wines side by side is so much fun. It's uh, just, so interesting. I love it. I learned so much mm -hmm. from that. And well, just tasting yeah. this one in the seventeen. Well, and each wine reacts differently with the different situation. Like, for example, I right now I've been working for the winery doing um, just working with the barrels and maintaining them, just like checking them topping them, all that stuff. But one of the other things is, this is a little late to do it too. It's just that Corona has hit us all hard anyways. But I have to check all of the new barrels that I took a chance on last year that are different for us. I had to taste those, compare them to what we have and pick the favorites. And so I was working with the Barbera and Macau today and I gotta say, very interesting same wine, same everything, and same new French oak, but two different manufacturers. To see those differences is crazy. Really? Yes. And to, to taste the difference. And it's not necessarily the flavor or, or what it's like, because you might like both of them, but then it's also when you blend it with a little bit of neutral or something else, like what tastes better than the other. So um, I'm dealing with two different Coopers that are new. Three, I'm sorry, three that are new. So it's been, it was interesting. Wow. My is amazing. amazing. It's, it really is. Like people think it's, it's not, but, uh, but it makes a difference. Definitely does. Well, 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 I have to tell you, I think, I have to say, I think out of the three, mm -hmm. where's your out of, oh, right. of the four. That's right. I, and I really thought, my best friend was going to come and visit, but I love it. <gasps> but I have to tell you, oh I my. think my favorite is the Zen. The Zen. The Zen. Bonnie's been I, the Zen. Oh my God, it's so. I I'm am so torn. surprised. I'm torn. Torn. I like colors. them all for different reasons. As far as tasting and drinking right now, I think I'm going to get a Zen. But I wanted to go back and taste the Malbec because I think this wine has so much potential. Very excited. I'm excited about all of them. I can't pick. I can't pick. I did. It's too much. I can't. Well, I want you guys to be excited about the Malbec because and the Cap Franc. Well, the Cap Franc, yes, but if you you know for your um, your wines coming out in your shipment, mm -hmm. we're I'm just excited that you, we can release yes. a new wine in our um, shipments. And sometimes that's kind of hard because just like our, our Cap Franc, they they're know. ready. I mean, they're ready. These are all new. We were really hesitant on when to introduce them because they're new. It's not like a follow on. But I think summertime, especially now, like people are getting out a little more, even the tensions are still a little high, it's an exciting time. So why not release them? So, um, well, maybe I shouldn't be asking this in front of uh, oh. yeah, me here. But I didn't know if that would give anybody like any of the elite members, would they be okay? Would they be able to switch a wine for the? Um, oh, that's a tough one. So I that's something you can. Yes, actually, need to look into that. So because if you're an elite yeah. member, 
you might be able to switch out a bottle of wine for the cab frog. That's true. Just so, let you know that's something if you want to be Wait a bit, Bonnie. Yeah. yeah. Anything that is a current release can swap out. Okay, so if you're, if you're thinking of upgrading to Elite, yeah. this might be the now time to do it. Time. Yes. And um, the other thing I did want to verify, just the, the only, so the pink jug, the jugs never go out in the club shipments, just as you guys know. The Cap Franc, we didn't make enough to go out in the club shipments, but we just talked about if you're an Elite member, that's a good way to, you know, swoop in and hang a left and grab one. Um, the Zinfandel and the Malbec will be going out in our club shipments, um, and I will double check on when. I think the Zinfandel is going out in the fall. Yeah, and the Malbec because, is, because, or is it the Malbec or the Berbera is going out in July? I can't remember. No, we're doing the Malbec in July. In the fall, you're thinking of switching the because the six the, bottle. I think we're doing you're gonna Zin. Keep the bar Barbera. I think Zin and Barbera. Yeah. Oh my God. It's gonna be a good. I'm gonna season. join the club just so I can get all the. Way. It's gonna be a good season. Yes. But yes, other than that, we just thought we would touch base um, on Saturday. So I was just also letting them know this Saturday will be the last time that we do the two a week, I think. Okay. Um, we'll, and I mentioned we'll be sending out a survey and I'll attach it to some of the links on the Facebook. So if you're following one feed or you don't get our emails or something, just fill out the survey. We just really want to know when the best times to do our video feeds are. Um, we don't want to interfere with your week, and, uh, and we especially getting out in social media or social distancing. You definitely, I say, if you can get out, go. Hundred percent. Yeah, and then come to our tasting room because we're open. Just even getting like you went to the beach. I remember the when I went to the beach, it was just like. I was so scared that I was going to get stopped because I was on the beach, but it's like they had signs as long as there's social distancing and you have to keep moving. I think now you can lay on the beach. Yeah, there was a ton of people laying it. I sat on the, um, I was sitting on the, um, the wall and having some of my water. But to me, just to be able to go and get out is great. Yeah, and just to walk, and we walked the pier, I walked down to town. That, that, that little town of Cayuga is just so it's cute. a cute town. Um, but yeah, so um, yes, yeah, so we are open. Um, we will be maintaining, I think we'll start opening up on Mondays. Um, we'll call it safely. I mean, typically we're here Mondays, but safely after the 1st of July. And then um, we are gonna just start loosely trying to get back into the schedule, but we're still not gonna be open seven days a week right now. So we'll keep you guys updated. The rules are changing day by day. Um, but like you know, if you call or send us an email, we are here every day at some point and we'll yes. check everything and, um, and, and get back to you. Yeah, and, if you, and it, uh, you as a club member, even if you're not a club member, if you want to make a reservation, um, oh, yeah. and we're not in it, it's, if we're not here, we can we can accommodate you. You just give us some time, if you at least 48 hours. Yeah. That would give us time to where either Caitlin or I or Anna. And sometimes if it's a Saturday, like the, we're just learning all this now because we kind of, we were able to reopen this last weekend for the first time without food. And so people could walk in. Um, so if it's going to be on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday, sometimes we're busy, sometimes we're not. But if you guys are, are peanut enthusiasts or club members, just give us a call, just so we can hold a table or make sure that you get in. Exactly. Um, because because of our limited capacity, we can't we can't have people at the bar. We can't squeeze people in in different spots. Um, we have to keep the six foot separation. So we want to make sure that we're catering to our club members as a priority um, and our existing customers. Um, because it is nice to just get out and relax and have a glass of wine without worry. Uh, because we're we're safe here. Exactly. We're in. We're a happy place. And if you if you don't feel like just coming in and tasting here, you can always come in and buy a bottle. We'll open it for you and just recork it. And just one block away is the park. They've added so many. They've added social distancing tables, mm -hmm. so you can go have a nice little picnic if you oh, want yeah. to too. And if you can sit in, you can come in and have a glass. We have some new songs on the jukebox. Oh, we do. We just put them on. Put some new 45s yeah. on. 
And, uh, oh, that was what I was going to mention. So this Saturday, um, we had a little staff meeting last night, and Anna and Marilyn wanted to challenge Bonnie and I to a blind tasting. So that'll be this Saturday. You guys get to watch us figure out if we can actually taste the different piles. I hope that I know what I'm doing. I'll just try to not eat anything spicy or hot that day. And I'll try not to be, well, I won't we'll drink anything all day. You know what's funny? I love talking to customers about, um, there's a term, and I guess it's just been in the industry or for so long. A lot of industries have these funny terms, and we have the one called palate fatigue, and people think it's a joke, but it's a real thing. It's a real it thing. It is a real thing, and it's not because you're drinking too much, it's because you're tasting so many different flavors, acidities, um, tannins, like it's not even the alcohol part of it. It's just, if you go, everyone has done this sometime in their life. If you brush your teeth, and then go drink some orange juice, that's palate fatigue. That is like, you're done for a little while. You just, so tasting and getting things nailed down is difficult sometimes. Yes. The struggle's real, people. And I have to tell you, I mean, I'm a wine enthusiast. I am. I, I know my wines, but if I have been drinking wine all day, and then somebody like somebody comes up. Oh, can let's do a blind tasting. My palate could be shot. I don't know what the heck I'm drinking. Maybe yes. I'll have to like power up or something. It's an, it's kind of embarrassing because you're you know it's just like I mean how well is a master's thought song? Like he could be drinking all day and then if somebody goes try this, can he really or she really? choose what that really is is all i'm saying i i just want to know yeah i think a lot of it comes down to just your comfort level and then just like what you're like a, a newer master song maybe not but like someone who's like been down that road all that stuff where it just becomes muscle memory for them like where they can identify flavors like that where i you know i can't do that but it's, yeah does he really happy i don't know <laughs> Right on. So we'll see you on Saturday. You if you have any Saturday. questions, oh, is there any questions? Yeah. If there's any questions, let us know. Um, we'll see you Saturday. We are open. Um, give us a call if you are planning to come to town. If it is a spontaneous visit, just stop by. We we've, we've been able to accommodate ninety percent of everybody, but we have had a few people we've had to turn away. Most of the restaurants are all open now. Um, they do have limited days as well. Uh, but it's nice to be able to have a full menu at a real restaurant. They're also still doing the takeout though too, so if you want to do the picnic at the park, or uh, one of the things I've been wanting to do, and maybe I'll try to do that sometime soon, is um, take a picnic to the beach, get a bottle of wine, and get some takeout and head, head over there. So, um, yeah. But uh, we hope to see you guys. But we'll see you Come Saturday. See and you then Saturday. Keep your eyes open for that survey because we'll be sending that out and we'll be collecting the results. Yeah. Just like you're at um, Family Feud. Collect yes. those surveys. We're going to see who's the winner. We will be very excited. So, cheers. So Good to see you. Cheers to you. Cheers to you guys. And uh, we will Here's see you Wind Down Wednesdays. Don't let anybody get you down except yourself. <laughs> I always think of the hump day, like camel, like a camel. And hump day. What wine would a camel drink? I think he would go Malbec. I think he would go Malbec, too. Yes. He likes the camel. Yeah. I think he's a little humper. Alrighty. We'll see you guys later.